Motives are everything in our relationships. Uh, I've been married for over 35 years and, you know, I could try to do things or not do things out of fear that my wife would be angry and I don't want my wife to be angry at me. Or I could do things for her out of love because I care for her. I think probably she would rather have me do it out of love and I think most of us would like to operate like that rather than just afraid of somebody being angry. And the same is true of our relationship to God. And Paul's going to explain an aspect of our motives as we look here in Romans chapter 16 and verse 26. I'm Pastor Tim Holsher, and we've been looking at how God stabilizes us as believers. Uh, and that's he stabilizes us by believers coming to understand some truths. And those truths have to do with the security of our relationship to God that it is based on grace and not based on works and not based on law. And when I say insecurity, I'm not simply talking about the fact that we can't lose our salvation. I'm talking about the fact that the things that we enjoy in our relationship with God are not in jeopardy. And so we saw that these things were revealed. They, were, they had previously been a mystery. And a mystery meant that it was a new truth. And we saw in verse 26 that they've been disclosed now by prophetic writings. And those prophetic writings, I believe, are the writings of the apostles uh, that are recording for us this revelation, this revelation that explains to us um, how our, this stability is set in our relationship with God because it rests on God, not on us. And then he says, that those prophetic writings here in verse 26 are in accordance with in accordance with the commandment of the eternal God. And that word commandment uh, is a word in the Greek, uh, epitage, from epitasso, that meant to, to, to command or to put things in order, to set something over for the purpose of putting it in order. And so when he's looking at this, He's looking at the fact that this was God's instruction. This was God's plan, and he charged that it would be done at this time. God never has a plan B. God doesn't go, well, we'll try this. I didn't work. Well, we'll try this. God's plan has always been God's plan, and it doesn't deviate. Despite what we might think, we might think, well, that seems like a deviation from the plan of God. God always operates on plan A. And that's part of this when he's talking about this commandment is that God has set this in order. So this is so this has come out exactly at the time God wants us to know this. Uh, he didn't make it known in the past, but he's made it known for the present. And by present, I mean starting in Acts chapter 2 to the present time. And the purpose of that, and here's God's purpose now, that as we're saying, there's no plan there's no plan B with God. It says, um, oh, there it is. It's for, for an obedience of faith. And you see this over here at the end of verse 26 in the New American Standard, an obedience of faith. And here, unto an obedience of faith. Unto all the Gentiles, this has been made known. Obedience of faith. The word obedience that he uses here occurs uh, 14 times in 14 passages in the New Testament. Six of those, six of 14, occur in the book of Romans. Out of all of the New Testament, six of the 14 all occur here in the book of Romans. You think maybe the idea of obedience was something that Paul was concerned about? Does God want us to be obedient? Yeah, God wants you and I to be obedient. But he wants us to be obedient for the right reason. He wants us to be obedient from faith. And this is, says an obedience of faith. And I, I believe that he's talking here about the idea it's an obedience that comes from faith. And what do we mean by comes from faith? It means that you believe the promise from God. And when you believe that promise from God, you then obey in light of that promise which is exactly what we've been looking at. One of those promises, nothing can separate me from the love of Christ and nothing can separate me from the love of God. 
And then we looked at a series of other promises uh, in the past couple days. And if you understand those promises, you obey in light of that. You don't obey to try to keep in God's good graces. You are in God's good grace. And therefore, you obey because that's true. So it's an obedience that comes from faith, from you believing those promises, or that promise at least, but I would say promises, plural, that God's made to us as New Testament believers. Back in chapter 1 here of Romans, this is Romans 1 and verse 5, he says, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about, or same language that we had over in exactly the same language we had in Romans 16, for ice, for an obedience of faith among all the Gentiles. Paul said at the beginning of the letter, and he says it towards the end of the letter, guess what? Part of my purpose as an apostle, Paul speaking, was God using him to bring about or to lead to this obedience from faith, helping these believers understand this solid relationship they have with God and how that should be the foundation of their obedience. Now, under the law, let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 10. It says, uh, it says, the day that you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb, that would be what we would understand as Mount Sinai back in Exodus 19. The Lord said to me, assemble the people before me and I will let them hear my words so that they may learn to fear me, fear me. We have here um, this word, ara, uh, that they may fear me, or yare, excuse me, that they may learn to fear me all the days they live on the earth and that they may instruct or teach their children likewise. Same thing in verse 29. The people all say, yeah, we'll do this, but the Lord knows they really don't. It's not really in them. And so he says in verse 29, if only they had a heart to fear me, and the fearing would result in their keeping or guarding all my commandments so that they and their children would prosper forever. And again in verse 2 of chapter 6, do this so that you may Fear the Lord your God all the days of your life, notice, by keeping or guarding all of his statutes and commands that I'm giving you, you, your son, your grandsons, so that you may have a long life. Uh, The opposite of that, opposite of that long life is kind of a tongue-in-cheek way of saying you don't fear and you don't obey, you're going to die. And that was, death was very common judgment under the law. Law motivated people to obey God by fear. In fact, Deuteronomy 28 lays out, remember, the blessings and the curses. And the blessings are the carrot on the stick. Here, here's something you can earn if you obey. But most, most of Deuteronomy 28, most of that section in there is dedicated to the curses. Because under law, it wasn't the motivation of receiving from God that motivated them, apparently as much as the motivation of being fearful of what it would be like to come under the curses. And yet that's not primarily how God motivates us as believers today. God's goal for us is an obedience that comes from faith, not an obedience that comes from fear. And I hope you, as we've been going through these studies, if you haven't already, are coming to appreciate more and more who Jesus Christ is for you right now. So who are you in him? What God the Father is doing in you, what the Holy Spirit is doing in you, and you realize the, the solidness of that relationship and with that solidness that you are encouraged to operate by faith and as a result to obey God, not to earn not to avoid, just because you appreciate this absolute great salvation that we have. And when you're appreciating that salvation and you're able to obey from faith, that's when we truly can have a good day in the Lord. Thank you for joining me today.